Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Robbins. I'm on the uh, School of Journalism and Media faculty, and I will be moderating our panel today with our recent graduates from the Moody College of Communication. Hello, everybody, friends old and new. Uh, I'd like to briefly introduce um, our panelists going clockwise on my Jeremy Thomas is a May 2015 graduate, and uh, Shivan Patel is a 2019, uh, December 2019 graduate. Uh, so Rachel, let's start with you, and you can add a little more to that introduction, please. Um, yeah, sure. So I graduated in December 2016 from the uh, journalism school, um, and I also did the sports certificate program. Um, so I took some of those classes that were um, like sports law, things like that. Um, and now I live in Brooklyn, New York and work um, at NBC Sports um, doing production mainly for the Olympics, but also for our other properties like the NFL, um, NHL, things like that, producing anywhere from, you know, 30 second pieces of content to full length documentaries. Thank you. How about you, Christine? Hey, okay, so um, as Kevin said, I'm a May 2020 grad. I, after graduation, I worked uh, with ESPN Longhorn Network until December. I've spent the past few months working freelance for CBS Sports in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm currently relocating to Bristol, Connecticut to be a part of the ESPN Next program. So that's what I've been up to since graduation. I majored in RTF and I was also a business minor. Thank you, Christine. How about you, Andres? Yeah, so I graduated in May of uh, 2019. I currently work for St. Louis City SC and Elevate Sports Ventures, who's in a consulting agency within sports. Um, recently moved here from Austin, was formerly with Austin FC, getting the professional MLS team set up there. So majored in public relations back in school uh, with the Stan Richards School of Advertising and PR and went straight into sports after I graduated with Austin FC. Thank you very much. Jeremy, how about you? Hi, I graduated as Kevin had mentioned May 2015. I guess I'm the old person here, but that's okay. Uh, and straight from there, I went into uh, the local television route. I worked for a, a television station just north of Dallas in Sherman, Texas, KXII, for about five years in multiple roles. I uh, started out as a news reporter, then went into sports reporter, weekend sports anchor, uh, as well as uh, co-anchored the weekly Friday night football show that they had there. I was the morning news anchor there, also did some directing and producing. And then I decided to go back home just for a little bit. I am at KTRE in East Texas working as a news reporter, but also doing some sports work on the side as well. At UT, I graduated uh, with a journalism degree uh, and was also part of the sports journalism certificate program. And I double majored. I was in the College of Liberal Arts and graduated with a history degree and a minor in African and African diaspora studies. Outstanding. Thank you, Jeremy. And finally, you, Siobhan. Hey, everyone. Um, I graduated in December 2019. And immediately after graduation, um, I had an internship with Turner Sports in Atlanta, um, which was pretty cool. I was able to work with the inside the NBA team with Charles, Shaq, Kenny, um, and Ernie. Um, but unfortunately, you know, my internship ended early due to COVID. Um, so I came back home to San Antonio. And I, I wanted to create my own experiences and create my own sports content. So I um, established my platform, Patel Pick and Roll Sports. And it all started with the podcast first. Um, I would be reacting to you know, NFL, NBA, college football, college basketball. And then once I started expanding my networking circle, um, that's when I became the co-host of two live YouTube talk shows. And we, we not only talk about sports, but my goal is to you know, continue to highlight stories of people wanting to break into the sports industry. And we really reflected that in, in the interviews that we've done, you know, um, during our shows, we've interviewed all the kinds of people from like writers to coaches. You know, we interviewed NBA head coach, Taylor Jenkins of the Grizzlies, um, Spurs player, Keldon Johnson, 
um, people in the front office, people in the business side of sports, NBA analysts. So we're kind of continuing to share the stories of people out there and looking to continue to build my audience and create relative content. And I graduated from UT with a degree in corporate communications and a minor in business. That's great. Thank you, all of you, for being here and sharing uh, what you will today. Uh, this is, uh, I can't see all of our uh, attendees out there. I've got my chat open. If you have a question, please submit it in the chat and uh, I'll, I'll answer it. Um, or perhaps call on you. I think we probably have that function today, but uh, definitely want this to be uh, interactive for all involved. Um, let's start with you, Christine, because you're our newest graduate and you are literally on the road uh, to start your work with, with ESPN. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's, let's ask you this. What did it take? What did it take for you to be on this highway right now on your way to ESPN? Networking, 100% networking. I had the privilege of interning with Longhorn Network for the whole last year of my time at UT. And I had applied for this program last March and obviously hiring got completely shut down due to the pandemic. Um, so I stayed in touch. And then in August, I was given the opportunity to go back to ESPN as an intern and work for a few more months during the football season. And I continued to talk with recruiters and things at ESPN, just saying I'm still interested whenever something happens. And a few weeks ago, I got a call saying that they are hiring a few PAs. And it went really quickly from there. And now I'm in the car on my way to Bristol. So all I can say is stay in touch with everyone you meet, because that's exactly how I got the job. That's great. And uh, it's worth noting to all of you who are attending this um, that now you know Christine Taylor at ESPN. So your network has grown by one if you're interested in working for uh, ESPN someday. Um, Andres, how about you? What did it take for you to get where you are right now? Yeah, I think Christine's point about networking is spot on. Uh, definitely making sure that you have people that you can rely on and people that you can reach out to, not just for opportunities within their organization, but also people that they know. So using your network's network. Uh, but it also comes down to hard work. You have to be willing to put in the hard hours. Sports is an industry that I think we can all agree on. It doesn't rest. So you have odd hours. You have things that you're going to have to do outside of your typical eight to five, nine to five, whatever it is. And you just have to be comfortable with that. And, and we all love the sport. We all love what we do. So letting that show through, I think, really helps you along your path. And if you're passionate about it, like I am about soccer, people are going to take note of that. People are going to start to want you to be a part of their organization to have the passion uh, and get people involved and get people excited about what you're doing right now, too. Thank you for that. So both of you have mentioned networking. We'll certainly get to everyone else on that question, but maybe it's a, a good time to pause here and come up with a, kind of a working definition of what networking means uh, at, uh, for, uh, say, an undergraduate student who's just had internships. Um, uh, what does that mean to you, Andres, when, when, when you talk about networking? To me, it's, it's more than just the people that you've met, absolutely the people that you meet, whether it's at career fairs or whether it's at the internships that you're a part of. Um, but networking also goes just beyond that into uh, reaching out to people that went to UT, reaching out to people that work in similar lines of work that you want to be a part of. One of the things I used to do all the time as an undergraduate was go and find a job that I was looking for uh, in the future. So a lot of people that worked for soccer teams, whether it be in Europe or here in the States, and then look at their past experiences too and try and see how can I closely align with that and you know who can I meet that's going to get me there. Um, but absolutely, networking for me is f finding a group of people that believe in you, uh, people that believe in your abilities, and so that way you can continue to show that off and they're advocates for you when it comes time. Great. Thank you for that. Rachel. Tell everyone how you got to New York. Uh, sure, it was a winding path. Um, <laughs> um, when I graduated, my first job, well, I'll rewind. Um, so in 2016, in the lead up to the Olympics, um, 
um, they were looking for, NBC Sports was looking for interns and they came to their connections at UT looking for somebody, I suppose. Um, and so, um, you know, I've been involved in the sports communication and media program and had bugged um, Chris Hart quite a bit saying, hey, I want to get in TV. I've, I've never really done documentary work, but I love it. Um, any opportunity, like I'm always game for. Um, and, you know, there was an interviewing process within UT and I ended up getting the internship to go to Rio um, to be an intern for um, NBC Sports and what's called like CTV, which is really like live, live television work, which um, I had never been a part of. Um, and while there, just kind of expanding my network, got introduced to Texas Crew Productions that's actually based out of Austin. Um, that is a production company that does incredible work. Um, and I interned for them my last semester when I came back from Rio um, and through some of their connections and through Kevin, I ended up um, applying for a few things that when I was graduating, got a little worried. I'm sh as I'm sure you guys are all experiencing, you apply to so many things and you hear just nothing um, most of the time. Um, and um, Kevin actually connected me to somebody who was involved with NFL Films at the time. And so my first job was in Philly um, out of NFL Films doing production assistant work for them. Um, but I never really lost, like, you know, Andres was saying, you know, keeping your connections, um, in the know with what you're doing sometimes kind of feels strange, but is super helpful for both you and for them. Um, so I stayed in touch with my NBC, um, kind of bosses and people I met there. And, um, at some point they had a, um, they have a program kind of similar to what Christine's doing at ESPN, which is a rotational program, which I highly recommend for a lot of reasons. Um, and they said, hey, you should apply for this. And so I did and, you know, bugged a bunch of people um, that I had met at the Olympics and got my foot in the door that way. And then it was just that program's pretty rigorous. Um, they shuffle you around for 18 months to different departments. And then at the end of it, um, they say, um, thank you very much for your time or, um, we'll actually hire you. Um, and so 18 long months later, I had a staff job, which is rare in this industry. And I am very, very grateful for. Thank you, Rachel. Shivam, how about you? Yeah. So it all started for me on um, the summer before my last semester at UT. That's when I knew that I, hey, I want to pursue a career in sports. You know, I'm going to put two feet in and really go at this, you know, really hard. Um, and then that summer, I started, you know, contacting people from all these different, you know, teams like the Spurs, um, all these other different teams, like in the communications and public relations department saying, hey, I'm a student, but I'm interested in pursuing, you know, a career in sports. Um, is there any time, you know, you would like to talk so I can learn more about your journey and get any like career advice? So that, so that was pretty big for me. Um, also that summer, um, I attended a one week class at the NBA Las Vegas Summer League. And, and there we learned, you know, all about the business side of sports, communications, media relations, everything. So, and I really was really interested in going into like, you know, the media side, specifically the sports media side. And I was able to meet, you know, a lot of people, make some connections there. Um, that's where I got the idea to start my podcast, um, relationship building um, from the people that I met there. And I continue to establish, you know, those relationships. Um, and then once I came back for the semester um, at UT, um, I worked as the media relations intern with the Texas men's basketball team. So I was able to get valuable experience there. And even after that, even after I graduated, I continued to you know, build those relationships, continue to expand my networking circle. Um, I would send emails you know, um, every couple of weeks or, or every month you know, to my networking circle, just giving an update. Here's what I'm doing, you know, just try, try to keep in touch. And I think that's really proven very valuable for me to continue to uh, maintain those relationships. Yeah, that's really smart. Thank you for that, Siobhan. And, and Jeremy, how about you? So one of the first things I started to do my spring semester before graduation was contact. I knew I wanted to go the local television route. I started contacting news directors and general managers just to see, 
what they had open. Um, hey, you know, I'm looking for a job, hope to be a valuable asset to you. Some of that was met with positive feedback. A lot of it was not. Um, I actually drove to a station in Louisiana, just on a whim, just to drop off my resume, things like that. Mm -hmm. The news director at that point came out and had very pointed words uh, about that, that she did not appreciate that. About two hours later on my drive back from that station, she called me and apologized and offered me a job at that point. Um, I did not <laughs> take that job, but crazy enough, that incident opened up an avenue of me declining that job, but her also deciding to send my resume to other stations and to other news directors out of that. I think connections, as a lot of the folks here have mentioned, are crucial and key. Also, I think self-belief in what you're trying to do is valuable. To be honest with you, I did not have the belief coming out of college I could get a sports job anywhere, truthfully. I did not think that I had the abilities or the skills like a lot of the panelists here to go off to do amazing things at huge markets with huge uh, companies as well. So having that self-belief probably would have changed things for me in, in many different ways. But I'm still grateful for the opportunities that I've had. I've covered a lot of big time sporting events from conference championship games to national semifinal uh, college football playoff games as well. Um, I've been grateful and thankful to be able to win awards for some of my work as well. So having that self-belief, keeping those connections have been invaluable to me. And I think that's something that will probably play a key role as all of you are looking for jobs here pretty soon, even in the midst of the craziness of the pandemic as well. Thank you, Jeremy. We have a question. We have a question from Austin Tackman. His question is, were there any UT classes or programs you took that you believe helped you get you where you are? Um, so let's start with you, Andres. You want to take that one? Sure. Uh, I remember, I don't remember the specific name of the class, but it was Professor Willie's, probably some type of sports communication and social media, something along those lines. And I think his, his experience having worked for the Sacramento Kings and um, a few other professors as well with their experience, just uh, Dr. Butterworth is a great one as well, that they have their experience. So learning from them, getting those nuggets of information from them was, was really helpful for me. But honestly, the most important thing that I really learned and what I would recommend to every student there is communication is continuing to be just the key throughout the whole industry. It's going to be in every industry. So having the opportunity to just be in your classes right now, whether it's sports focused or not, but honing those communication skills to be um, a little bit more refined and just being a little bit more concise with everything that you say, because the best communicators are the ones that can get their points across really quickly and they can control a room with their language. So those are some of the classes, at least for me, that were very beneficial. Thank you. How about you, Siobhan? Yeah, for me, it was two classes of communication and sports with Dr. Butterworth. And then the, it was some of the sports business class, I think, with Dr. Lula. Um, so those were two big classes for me, specifically Dr. Butterworth's class. Um, I was able to learn more about, you know, like sports politics, you know, dive deeper, you know, into just playing sports, but how critical communication is, as Andres said, that into, you know, sports, because you have to be able to communicate well, you know, to be successful in the industry. So I think those are the two uh, classes that I think I came away from that continue to fuel my passion, like, wow, this is something interesting. And this is something that I want to do. It really sparked uh, my interest. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeremy, how about you? There are way too many to name. I, I think the first one that comes to mind, audio storytelling with Chris Wilson. That class for me was inspirational because one of the first things that he had us do, one of the first exercises was to just read a basic line of news copy. We did it in our own voice. I was slightly embarrassed by my voice because I'm a small country kid from East Texas, you know, country accent and everything else. But in that moment, he told me, you know, there are going to be moments where you can empathize and relate to your audience, especially within those Southern regions. So just be yourself. That has played 
a huge role in what I do today, for sure. Your class with reporting sports, uh, also um, with Dr. Kate as well, um, y'all pushed me to my limits to figure out what I wanted to do in this industry and how to be the best I can with it. So, and a lot of my classes too with the College of Liberal Arts uh, as well, uh, and with my minor especially, because that made me question a lot with my identity and questions that I haven't had um, in my own mind at that point. So, so many classes at UT. I, I mean, I am so grateful that I double majored because it broadened my horizons from just being a small town kid to getting out and seeing what the world is actually all about. That's outstanding. Thank you. How about you, Rachel? Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to say your class. <laughs> um, I mean, I would say it was three classes really in the journalism program that made a difference. Your class, um, reporting sports, um, I say it all the time to new production assistants that show up in our program um, that you know, you don't have to, I didn't come from a TV background. Um, before my first internship with NBC Sports, I had never like, you know, really done any television work whatsoever. I didn't do TSTV. I didn't do the daily text and anything like that. Um, and what your class taught me was that you just have to have the mind to understand how to go out and report and um, problem, really just like, creative thinking and problem solving and, and also deadlines, which I hated in your class, but has served me so well. <laughs> um, and then I would say um, um, Maggie Rivas Rodriguez's class. Um, I'm trying to recall what that class was called, but it was just the writing portion of the, of the uh, like entry level journalism classes. Um, was reporting words, Rachel? I, I think, it, yeah, it was reporting words. Yeah. Um, and she had one assignment that was super impactful where it was basically you had to go find a story that was totally outside of your comfort zone and go and report it. And I went to um, a small market outside of Austin somewhere just on my own. Um, you know, um, basically everybody there spoke Spanish and not much English. Um, and I had to go find the story. And, you know, I was a pretty shy kid growing up and you can't be that if you're going to be a producer um and so like pushing me to be outside of my comfort zone um and in new locations that felt uncomfortable um was really important and impactful because that is my job on every shoot is I parachute into a city or a place a, a group of people and have to get comfortable very quickly um and be able to you know, pivot um, even when um, I am not aware of my whole surroundings. Um, that and then portfolio with um, Bob Buckaloo, um, which just forced me to think about how writing and video and audio all play a part because um, that's where this whole industry is headed. You have to be a jack of all trades and to be able to write and um, understand how to cut audio and all those things are super, super important. Um, so, I mean, the journalism program, um, despite having on the surface, nothing to do with video has been, um, the thing that's helped me the most in the video world. Well, that's, that's very rewarding to hear. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. And how about you, Christine, any courses or programs that you took at UT that you'd like to mention? Yeah, absolutely. So, I think my path is a little different because I didn't take any sports related classes until my last semester at UT. And I took that class for fun, um, not related to my major. RTF is an amazing program, but I definitely had to cater my classes to my goals rather than take TV related classes. But I think all in all, all of my classes are, I gain skills that I use every single day. So while producing, experience from mainly through TSTV, but overall the RTF program and classes like multi-camera TV directing or producing film and TV, all of those classes are still skills that I use every single day in my job. So it, it works out. 
we we lost a little bit of your uh, of what you were saying there, Christine. But uh, I think we, okay. we get the essence of it. Um, okay. We have a thank you for that, Christine. We have a new question from uh, Daniel. Uh, she, um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Daniel. If I didn't, my apologies. Uh, and it is, what advice would you give to graduating seniors? Okay. Um, that's that's kind of a broad question, Daniel, and, and I'm going to use that question to ask one that I've been thinking about, uh, and it's this. Many of you, all of you have mentioned the, uh, the idea of networking, which is an active thing that you have to initiate. In other words, your network doesn't come to you and just surround you and protect you and uh, take you to the places where you are now. And... All of that is good, but I also have heard a couple of people talk about shyness, um, about comfort zones, and uh, and I myself remember when I was uh, at your stage of life feeling um, profound insecurities about whether I was ready and who am I to uh, approach some 15-year veteran in my profession. Um, and I wonder if we can take Daniel's question about advice and, and bend it to, to that. If you individually can talk about how you were able to overcome whatever insecurities you might have felt uh, to make these important connections, uh, to take that step forward. And uh, let's start with, uh, with you, Shabam. Yeah, so for me, um, you know, graduating, it was just like, you know, am, am I ready to, you know, I'm going into this field because it's something that I've you know, never done before, you know, going into, you know, Turner Sports specifically. And for me, it was just um, willingness to, you know, to work hard, to be able to learn as much as possible, you know, say like, okay, I don't know everything. I'm willing to learn from other people, communicate with other people, you know, talk to other people. And I think that went a long way into me being able to learn about the inner workings, you know, of the industry specifically and to, you know, to learn a lot and be able to have, you know, a successful, you know, um, internship, you know, with uh, Turner Sports. Um, just talking about, you know, my my platform um, I, I, and my podcast, I was a little bit nervous about, you know, talking, you know, um, of course, you know, in a microphone and then talking on camera and, you know, to really be able to get over that is just, I really just started to practice um, and then just to try to get better, um, really improve my research, you know, research skills so I can like know what I'm going to, you know, what I'm talking about so that I'm not, you know, stumbling on camera. I look confident on camera. And I think that those were some of the big things, um, learning about myself, you know, like rewatching yourself saying, hey, hey, here's the things that I did well. Here's the things that I could have done better. I think self-critique is a big thing, I think, to be able to help uh, improve, you know, your insecurities. Excellent. Thank you. How about you, Rachel? Um, your question was exactly about, um, I guess, like, I don't know, it's, it's a little different, I guess, for me, maintaining those connections and, um, I guess, like, getting over whatever insecurities that I, I still have of imposter syndrome um, <laughs> is, um, especially with older people in the industry, because there is, they are the majority and they are mostly in charge and will be for quite some time. Um, that I think it's just, if you have a genuine interest in what, what you're doing, um, it became pretty natural to me to just set up meetings with those people to not say, hey, I wanna do this or, or you know, tell me how you got here, but just more be like, that piece you did, what was your thinking behind that? Like, why did you ask the questions that you did um, for an executive, you know, somebody who's in, in charge of like scheduling for the Olympics, um, you know, some, asking them about, you know, things that you're just genuinely curious about um, and having that conversation that like rapport with them, then it's just, I mean, it's a little different now. You don't see them in the lunch line and the commissary or anything like that, but um, they get to know you and they get to understand, you know, your passion and interests and your intelligence, hopefully. Um, and so it becomes less about using them to get somewhere and more about making genuine connections. And I think the, making a genuine connection where they feel like they're not just being used because they're aware and you obviously have to, and, and they know that, you know, people are looking for jobs, but they don't want to feel used. Um, and it feels bad just using them. Um, so, you know, a lot of the people I've made connections with 
even now that I don't work with, um, you know, just calling them up to see how they're doing, their family that they've told me about. Um, you know, it it is about getting your job, but it's also just about making like genuine connections with people who have um, the same passions as you. And it goes a long way, just like sharing your passions with each other and knowing your place. I think the biggest thing too um, is knowing your place a little bit and um, not being afraid to share your ideas, but also making sure you realize that you are new in this industry and, you know, these are the experts and at getting really good at whatever your prescribed job is before you push to um, kind of put your ideas out there. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. Jeremy, how about you? I completely agree with all of that. I think knowing your role is the most important thing, first and foremost, and then being able to make those connections. What Rachel just described was almost my experience when I interned at KXIN in Austin. Um, I was completely terrified because I watched these people for so long and it's just like, okay, well, go talk to them, go say something. But having that genuine notion of, hey, I am curious about what you're doing, what you said, why you said it this way, why you cut this video this way, as Rachel mentioned, why you asked those questions that way. I think that's the most uh, second most important thing to do at that point is trying to understand what they're doing so you can improve as well. And it paid off for me, and I think it might pay off for a whole bunch of people as well. Thank you for that. How about you, Andres? Yeah, so I think for me, uh, it's a little bit different because of the role that I'm in. So being more of a salesperson within the teams and working directly with companies and the community as itself to bring them into our organization, um, my role and kind of my path there was a little bit differently. And so what I feel like is when I was kind of coming through the industry and um, graduating college, I, I didn't feel so much shy, but I did feel like I was inadequate, that imposter syndrome that we all kind of touched on there. Um, and to Rachel's point as well, having that genuine interest about something, when you reach out to somebody that you want to connect with, it's not to talk to them about how, hey, how can you get me a job? It's, I just want to know more about what you're doing. Um, and, and as a professional, I think we can all agree that we've all been there and we want to talk to people about what we do and we all love sports. So talking about it more is always just a really good thing for us to do. Um, and, and I think here, here for me and as a salesperson, one of the things that actually helped a lot is speaking our minds. You know, if I knew that I wanted something or, or saw something that I could do differently, it was speaking up about it. So then somebody would say, well, that person has a good way of doing it. I think that's, that's a smart way for us to adjust and pivot which may not be the case in some other, some other people's roles. Um, so understanding that's going to be an important factor for everyone too, just, you know, where you're going to align yourself in sports and um, it is in some way understanding your role, but at the same time being confident enough to just speak your mind and, you know, be confident in your ideas, your opinions. So that way it can get you further. Cause at the end of the day, that's just speaking to who you are. I love it. Thank you, Andres. New question. This one's from Maya Taylor. How do you continue to stay motivated in your field? And we're just going to swing it right back to you, Andres. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Because because like I said, sports can sometimes be a tough industry to be a part of. Um, how do I stay motivated? Uh, well, first, I'm passionate about soccer. I'm passionate about helping the sport grow here in the U.S. Having studied PR, my approach to everything is always, how can I connect more people with the game? How can I connect more communities with the game to help it grow. So being a passionate about it definitely helps, um, but you set goals for yourself. You know, I wanna continue to learn more things. I wanna be a sponge. So uh, the VPs and the managers around me, I want to um, strive for their positions. You know, that's how I keep myself motivated is because I know that there's more in it for me. It's not just getting into the industry. I want to, in some ways, change the industry. I want to put my stamp on it. And so that, that's what keeps me going is I know that there's more out there and I'm sure each of you are the same way that don't settle for just getting in the door, you know, break down the door, go all the way to the front office and take a seat. I love that ambition. Thanks for that great message. How about you, Jeremy? How do you stay motivated? I believe finding out where your passion lies and figuring out where you want to go and not stopping until you get there. Um, I, I think that's kind of a huge role for a lot of folks, 
for me, um, I think also I kind of have a, a Jordan mentality about some things. Uh, a lot of my childhood growing up was, hey, you know, going to UT, that's something folks here, they don't do, you know, things like that. Um, I think that motivated me a lot to prove people wrong and to also show myself that I can do this and I can keep going. I mean, the ceiling is just a ceiling. You can break through and continue forward. That's what keeps me motivated uh, each and every day at this point. What keeps you motivated, Rachel? Um, yeah, I mean, I think for specifically, if you're going into like a creative type role, you, like they said, like just pure passion, it, you know, at the end of the day, what keeps me motivated is that I, I just want to keep telling stories. So, you know, you, every once in a while you run into an athlete who it's a pain to tell their story and you're doing it because they're a big time athlete. Um, you come away from that being like, well, that was, I mean, that was cool to meet so-and-so, but you know, um, that wasn't a great experience. And then you have these experiences. Like I just went on a shoot. I was talking to Kevin about out in Oregon with an athlete who was just incredible. And it, it's, you know, that one day spent with somebody who just has such passion for what they're doing in their sport and that you get to help like communicate that idea to, to a, a wider audience. Um, if you love storytelling, like that, you'll just keep going because there's there's an endless amount of stories to tell. Um, and so, if there's always just like, okay, what's the next story? What, how, what can I tell? Talk about next? Um, but it does get hard. Like the realities of this industry is that it 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 takes up a lot of your time. Um, and in a pa pandemic, it's even harder. Um, and uh, the industry is definitely changing. Um, so you know, there's also a motivation that the changes that are happening in our industry are, are scary at times, but also um, really exciting. Um, and the opportunities to be part of a, a massive shift in, in the media landscape is, is pretty cool. Thank you, Rachel. Siobhan? Well, what motivates me is waking up every day, knowing that I'm doing something I love. You know, I'm passionate about the content that I, you know, create, um, be able to reach out to, you know, a lot of people to hear their stories, hear their background, hear where they came from, you know, hear what motivates them and just reaching out to a lot of people and just making those connections, establishing those bonds. Um, that's really what motivates me and just know that, hey, just, just the beginning and there's a lot of untapped potential, you know, in this industry, this industry is, you know, continue to expand you know, every day and it's going to continue to get bigger. And, and I'm just excited to see what the future lies. I think that's what motivates me the most um, to continue to work hard and to grind and uh, to continue to keep it going. Outstanding. Thank you so much. We have two more questions. We are on quite a roll right now. Um, the first one comes from Aiden Carney. What advice do you have for those wanting to get involved in the sports industry if they don't have sports specific experience in their past internships. Siobhan, you got, you want to take that one first? Oh, so yeah. So if you don't have any, you know, sports uh, background, um, I think you just continue just to continue to reach out to, you know, people in, you know, in the industry um, to continue to get advice, you know, um, make connections, um, just find out ways that, you know, you can be able to break into this industry, you know, skills that you can acquire. It's important to be able to, have a lot of different skills, you know, for example, whether it's, you know, writing, you know, video editing, uh, you know, storytelling, you know, there's a lot of different skills that you can be able to contribute, not necessarily if you don't have any sports experiences. So just continue to be a jack of all trades, enhance your skill set. Um, don't be just one, don't, just don't have one skill, just uh, continue to make yourself as valuable as possible, then there's definitely going to be a role for you. So I think that's my main advice. Jeremy, what would you tell Aiden? The same thing. Um, you have a skill set that is particular to you and not just a line from taken, if you will, but you have that set to be able to expand not only your horizons, but also whatever company or station that you may be able to be a valuable asset to. It's understanding who you are, what you bring to the table, and also how you can be that valuable asset to them. Um, a lot of what I did for, I think my spring semester was try to create content that geared towards sports, even though I didn't have that experience or didn't have that reel from my internship. So I just tried to go through 
listen to folks on campus, try to find out what their stories may be and just go ahead and create that content for myself and not rely upon uh, the internship or some other entity to produce it myself. Excellent, thanks, Jeremy. Andres, what would you tell Aiden? Uh, yeah, I would tell Aiden that he's not alone in, in that position, that a lot of people coming out of school won't have sports experience and they will want to work in the sports industry. So don't be concerned that you don't have that experience right now. You know, there's going to be a lot of other people. And to everyone else's point so far, leverage the experience that you do have. Sports isn't an entirely different industry. We do things differently and it does have a big spotlight on it here in the entertainment industry, but a lot of the same things that you might have done in past internships or past jobs are going to be able to draw parallels into the sports industry. So being able to understand, you know, how working in customer service or how doing something a specific way at the job that you do have now is going to align with what you want to do. And those coursework, even if you've taken a sports course class, that's information, that's knowledge that you can have and bring into your new role. So just continue to leverage that, but don't be afraid that you don't have it right now. Great message. Thank you for that. Rachel, what would you tell Aiden? Yeah, I'd just echo all that. I mean, the sports world is its own world, but I mean, it, it's just a subject matter if you think about it that way. All the skills and jobs involved have mirrored positions in other industries. Um, and so as long as you come, you know, at the end of the day, what companies are looking for are, you know, people who are passionate, who care about putting in the hard work, um, who can, you know, communicate effectively um, and um, who are willing to put in, put in the time and who are people that they want to work with. Um, so just being yourself and um, knowing that you have a skill set that you can communicate in, in an interview, um, that's really all you need. And, um, the sports, any, any job you start, even if you have experience in sports, um, any job you start is going to be from, you know, ground level, you have so much to learn in your position and they know that. Um, and as long as you show a passion for it and um, the ability to learn, that's at the end of the day, that will get you past the first round of interviews. Thanks, Rachel. Christine's back. Christine, we have missed you. I'm sorry glad. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, we're getting some questions from students and- uh, Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, I want to I want to re repeat the question that Aiden Carney asked because it elicited some really smart answers. What advice do you have for those wanting to get involved in the sports industry if they don't have specific sports experience in their past internships? So, if you're still at UT, my best piece of advice would be to try and get involved at either TSPB or the Texan. Uh, if you still have time to do that. But if not, just try and uh, whenever you are reaching out, take advantage of your peers. So instead of reaching out to someone that's maybe 10 plus years into the industry, reach out to a few people that are in the role that you think you'd be applying for when you graduate. Those people have amazing bits of advice of who to network with. And a lot of times some of them also came from no sports backgrounds. And then maybe you can get some tips and tricks on how to get into the industry just show your passion when you're talking to people if you're passionate about sports then that'll come across but if you still have time to get involved then I think clubs and things like that are great ways to do it but networking is still key especially if you are trying to break in thanks Christine Christine this will start with you uh, on this question this is from Jake Herman and Jake asks do any of you have someone in your field you consider a mentor and if so, what is the most valuable insight or lesson they've provided you? Yes, a hundred percent. I have one. And hi, Jake. I know Jake. Um, when I was at Longhorn Network, my supervisor there, Andres, has been a mentor to me since probably my first day at Longhorn Network. And during COVID, all summer, I stayed in touch with him after I graduated. Like, hey, Andres, I don't have a job. I'm, it's a crazy time. What, what do I do? And it's not a specific piece of advice, but he kind of just told me to continue to work hard and just be the best that I can in that exact moment. 
what is meant to and will happen for me. And hopefully, and what ended up happening is he, to this day, I still talk to him all the time about my move up to ESPN. And he just gives me as he just gives me a lot of advice. I can't pinpoint exactly one, but definitely, I definitely have a mentor that has led me through all of this. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Christine. Andres, how about you? A mentor? Yeah, I'm sure there's been several that have had a large impact on me. Uh, the one that comes top of mind for me is uh, my previous manager there at Austin FC is the one that took a chance on me when I got hired on with Austin FC. Um, didn't really have any sales experience. My experience was primarily with like guest entertainment. And so he took a chance and he's continued to just um, push me to be better, uh, push our whole team to be better and make sure that we're always striving for more. And I always reach out to him. We still stay in touch and I'll tell him, you know, thank you for everything that you've taught me, the attitude, the mentality that you ingrained in me of, of what needs to happen here in sports. But he constantly says, I didn't teach you anything. You know, it was the people around you um that did that and, and he's like i brought in the smartest people that i thought would be good for the job and you guys continue to raise the level he said i just orchestrated it but he's like i'm not one of the smartest people in the room that's what the manager does so um surrounding yourself with with really smart people people that have skills that you don't have and that you can learn from and take bits and pieces from has been a huge part of, of my self-growth Thank you very much. So we have a good problem now. We have an embarrassment of riches. We have two more questions in the Q&A and we have three in the chat. So at this point, I suggest that I will, um, I will ask a question and if you would like to answer it, then give me a nod or pipe up. Uh, but otherwise, um, if you feel like the other panelists are doing a good job of answering that question, we can just, uh, we can just keep it going. How does that sound everybody? Sounds good. Okay. Um, and now before we leave Jake's question about a mentor, does anybody else want to add to that? Yeah, I'll say one thing, Kevin. Sure. Um, yeah, I think one of my mentors, um, a couple of them have said this before, um, so much of this industry involves, and I'm sure any industry involves luck, um, but it's positioning yourself to like, be in the best spot for luck. Um, it sounds a little confusing, but um, you know, so many things are right place, right time, but it's about positioning yourself through your work and passion and confidence to be in that spot where something's more likely um, to happen to you uh, just by the fact of your work to get there. Uh, the, the, uh... The analogy that I like, Rachel, and I'm sure that maybe you heard me say this in the room, if, if you want to get struck by lightning, you have to go outside and stand in the storm. That is a great way to put it. That is so much better. I'm going to just gonna pop, I'm gonna pocket that one. <laughs> Take it. It's all yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right. Um, you uh, Would you like to move on to the next question? Okay, good, good stuff, Jake. Thank you for the good question. Uh, this one comes from Jonathan. Uh, Bill and Nueva, uh, I have a feeling, Andres, that he might be talking to you. As a fellow soccer enthusiast, <laughs> see how I picked up on that? As a fellow <laughs> soccer enthusiast, I strive to combine my passion and knowledge in soccer with my future career. <laughs> Aside from networking, what else can I do to showcase my understanding of the sport and really break through in this soccer industry? Yeah, that's a really great question. It's a tough one to answer, to be honest, because there's a, there's a lot of people that want to do the same thing, you know, and uh, I think, like Rachel said, there is a lot of luck in this industry. I've been very fortunate enough to be on two expansion team projects, uh, which is very rare for anybody to be on one. So to, to have that opportunity, it's really rare. But I think what's really showcased it, not so much as my soccer skills or uh, my understanding of the industry, it's more my communication skills, just being able to then go back to that and communicate how I would be a valuable asset and how going beyond just uh, the networking aspect that I have valuable skills that a team would want to have, not just from soccer, but also being able to connect with people on a personal level, being able to connect with communities. So that's what that's what I would say is don't worry too much about 
the, the sports aspect side of it, really focus on the bigger picture of how I can communicate and how I can uh, position myself and, and really showcase what I do know through those different channels rather than just saying, I know soccer. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, this one's from Madison Murray. And it is for Rachel and Christine. Have there been times you have felt like you had to prove yourself more because you are a woman? Um, yeah, sure, I can start. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's no secret. I mean, it is definitely changing, but the sports world is predominantly um, run by men. Um, it is definitely changing, it is getting easier, but. Um, yeah, you definitely encounter it, um, whether it's because of age or gender. Um, <clears throat> but it's just about being kind of confident in your ideas and, um, you know, knowing your place, but also knowing when to speak up and say either, hey, something's wrong or, hey, I have this idea, you really should listen to it. And, and sometimes, you know, when you say something and somebody else in the room decides to take it as their own idea, like just rolling with the punches. You have to have thick skin in this industry, no matter what. Um, you know, I'm never saying like, you know, l allow something to happen that's not okay. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely sometimes exhausting. And, you know, it's funny, we've had conversations about it recently um, with some coworkers that uh, are male and they just, they don't even realize the extra things that we have to deal with either on a remote or um, in a meeting or something like that. Um, and it's working through it, but also not thinking about it all the time, because if you do think about it all the time, it um, becomes harder and harder to do your job. So just keep doing what you're doing and doing your job as if, you know, it gender doesn't matter because it shouldn't. Um, and, you know, it things are changing. So there's a positive in that for sure. Thank you, Rachel. Christine? I would say I've had it, very similar to what Rachel said. It definitely still happens and I haven't been a professional in the industry for very long but I have definitely experienced it um for instance at CBS I was the only girl in the entire building pretty much every day and it's something that you have to expect to a certain extent and I just went in and worked hard every single day but it would be a lie if I said that that wasn't in the back of my mind every once in a while like is this going to be harder for me as I'm trying to move up because of that mm -hmm. and like Rachel said, just work hard and you're going to get the comments. The first time I ever went in a truck, I, the guy walked up to me and was like, you have nice makeup. You must want to be a reporter. And there's nothing wrong with being a reporter, but it was a very strong assumption and it was based on how I looked. And it, I was an intern at that time. And so it definitely is, it can be discouraging, but just know that you're, you are meant to be there every single day and you are working really hard and you are just as good if not better than anyone else and gender has nothing to do with that and I just try to tell myself that it's hard it's it would be a lie if I said it wasn't but it's definitely it, it will get better I'm confident with that. love your attitude both of you um I have a feeling that this might be a little more for Shavam and Jeremy it's from Charles Garrison and Charles asks what advice do you have for creating a podcast or show? And what tips do you have to separate your content from the field? So some advice I would have, you know, for creating a podcast is some find something that you're passionate about because you could tell, you know, when listening to a podcast that if someone's not passionate about what they're talking about, it really shows. So find something you're very passionate about um, because then you're going to continue to, you know, develop your podcast, do research and put out the best content you know available and then for tips for trying to you know um, expand it is to find the right you know target audience um, to find the people that are interested in the same subject um, to continue to promote your you know podcast on social media continue to tell your friends about that about it because you never know that you know they could tell somebody else and it could continue to grow and expand and just find the right market and just continue to um, grow it as much as possible um, be passionate about it and put the work in because you're going to continue to get better and it's going to show your passion um, for what you're talking about and if you're really um, good at you know what you know then I think that's even going to go further because people are going to really trust your expertise and want to listen to you I think that's a main uh, key 
And with that research too, uh, as you just mentioned, that's going to be able to expand upon people trusting you. It's building that relationship of trust, which is hard to find. Um, it's almost like peeling back the onion, if you will. It gets gritty, it gets nasty, but to get to the center of the onion, the truth of it, the sweetest part, you have to do the work for that and define your own market as he just mentioned as well is crucial, it's key because there are so many podcasts out there. There are so many voices out there, but at the same time, once you find your specific topic, your specific sport, what you're passionate about, that's going to shine through tenfold above everyone else. Excellent, thank you. Okay, everybody, you ready? Story time. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is a moment in your college career where you made a really smart decision that changed everything. We could call it fate, but you made a choice and I'm, I'm just one in your four years at UT that changed everything. Siobhan, what was it for you? Hmm. I gotta think about that. Um, that changed everything for me. Probably is when I became an intern for the um, Texas men's basketball team. I was a media relations intern. Um, when, when I was at the summer league, um, I, I met with a um, college basketball analyst and he, he does all the big 12 games. So he, once I told him that my interest was in sports media, he was like, yeah, you should contact, you know, Scott McConnell. Um, he's, he works in the media team for Texas men's basketball. See if there's any opportunities, you know, you may have with him. So once I got back um, in August, you know, for the semester, I emailed him just kind of telling him how I, you know, how it came about his name. And I was interested in, you know, just learning, you know, about the business and just wanting to get it, get experience and get exposure and once I became an you know an intern it was amazing I was at all the basketball games I was able to see like the media side of basketball it was amazing I was there in the press conference um, I was sitting in like the they have like a little media section at the games where all the uh, reporters in Austin and all, all the journalists all sit so it was pretty cool to be able to learn and to interact with all those kind of people so that was probably the turning point for me just getting real life experience and especially being, you know, at, at UT and being a part of the media relations team for the basketball team. So it was amazing. Yeah, and Shivam, I'm, I'm glad to hear you give a shout out to Scott McConnell, who <laughs> in, my, in my experience is one of the best sports information directors I've ever worked he with. He is, he, he's amazing. And you can just ask him anything. Um, he, he'll like share his journey, his experiences. He gives great advice. He's just a great person to talk to and a great person to learn from. And I'm very, you know, grateful that he gave me the opportunity to be an intern and me to be kind of under his wing and to be able to learn from him. He's been a great mentor that I, you know, still keep in touch with now. I send networking emails. So I definitely keep him in the loop and he's, he's an amazing person. Well, you can be sure that the next time I see Scott, I'm going to mention Shivam and what he said, what you said about him in our. <laughs> well, thank you for sure. For sure. Uh, Andres, tell us a story. Yeah, so for me, it would kind of be two-parted. Um, I actually came to UT with the intent of majoring in chemical engineering. Um, and after my freshman year, quickly realized that was not the field that I wanted to be a part of. And so I actually took a year off. I enlisted in the military. And while I was in the military, uh, working in their intel community, I realized how important communications was. And so when I came back to UT, I decided that that's what I wanted to start studying. So that was a big turning point for me, wanting to start going into that. And um, being a fan of sports, I just knew that I was going to be gravitated towards that side of things. And so when I had the opportunity to spend several events out at the Circuit of the Americas, um, helping with their events and being, as, uh, as Siobhan was telling about, kind of behind the scenes uh, of a sporting event and starting to see some of the inner workings of how things operate and you know, how much is actually going on and seeing everyone communicate in a different way in just the fast paced environment. I knew that that was somewhere that I wanted to be and that I was in the right place. So um, call it fate, call it, uh, you know, lack of judgment for trying to study chemical engineering, whatever you want. Um, I'm glad that I, I switched to public relations and I'm definitely in the right place here. So. Christine, tell me, tell me, tell us about a choice you made that made all the difference for you. So when I came into college, I was still very much like I was in high school, focusing a lot on my grades and what that number meant and everything else. And I don't, I don't want to say that part of me went away, but some, 
point during the second semester of my first year, I made the decision to put my whole heart into TSTV. I spent probably 30 hours a week in that studio. And I don't regret one second of it because I have used TSTV in every job interview I have had since I graduated college. So that was kind of the deciding point. I, when I came into college, there was still a part of me that didn't know for sure that I was gonna work in sports. I had been working in sports since I was 17. And I was like, maybe this isn't what I wanna do. And second semester freshman year, I committed to it and I started working 40 hours a week in sports and I haven't stopped since, so. Outstanding, thank you. Jeremy, one choice. I think for me, um, there was a moment in Kate Dawson's class to where um, th there were a lot of things going on in my personal life at that point. Uh, there were several deaths in my family around that point and I was just struggling. I was having a hard time. Pulled me aside and she said, I know you're going through a lot right now, but you have to decide if this is something you want to do because you have to put the work in. This is something you just can't halfway do. You have to put your whole heart into it and then some. The work is strenuous. You got to decide if you want to do it. And in that moment, it took a good five seconds to decide, yeah, this is kind of what I want to do. So I need to put the work in. Uh, I have to some kind of way deal with what I'm dealing with on a personal level, but also realize that this professional side, I have to be as professional with it as possible. I have to give my all with it. So that was one defining moment that I had my sophomore into my junior year is figuring out, okay, if, if we're going to actually do this, we need to figure out a way to be mentally strong and to move forward. Right, and I'm I, sorry, I'm kind of typing too, um, because I just put in a story for our six o'clock news. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of- You're getting ready to be forward. on TV. <laughs> I, uh, I love how meaningful and how specific these moments are. Um, and Rachel, I can't wait to hear yours. Oh gosh, it is hard to pick just one. Um, I would say overall that really changed things for me actually involves um, Chris Hart on this call. Um, I actually started at NYU and transferred to UT. And um, I had come in thinking I wanted to do long form sports writing, um, but had always loved 30 for 30s and, you know, just kind of got interested, you know, but it seemed unattainable to ever work on a 30 for 30 um, or how I would get there. Um, didn't even understand how the documentary sports television world worked at all. And um, Chris, you know, I, I had just walked into the door plenty of times to Chris's office and say, hey, this is what I want to do. Like, um, you know, is there opportunities out there if you ever hear of something and Chris called me up one day and said, hey, there's this guy who's coming to shoot some interviews for a documentary with some um, people involved with the swim program at UT and, you know, they need some help uh, on the day of, would you be interested? And I definitely had plans. I was like, yes, definitely going to cancel all those plans um, and showed up and um, watched like for the first time how a documentary gets made um, behind the scenes. And it was just that moment where I was like, yep, this is this is what I wanna do. Um, and to see it happening on our campus, I mean, that's the benefit of going to a place like UT. It's like, A, you have one of the best programs in, in the world to do this. And you have great sports where people will come to get stories. Um, and to watch this producer, um, you know, interview one of the swimming coaches about her um, performance in an Olympics um, against whatever, uh, against uh, East German swimmers um, back in the day who had been um, part of some state run doping. Um, and to just watch her read this thing that um, was part of a deposition, long story, but she just started crying. And to see how that producer um, like handled interviewing her and you know a delicate balance between getting emotion out of somebody and like selling tears um, was just fascinating and I was like wow this is this is how storytelling happens out in the real world and 
you know, that was my first connection really to the documentary world because that producer, um, you know, was kind enough to give me his card and, you know, I called him and I had these conversations where I was just like, I know nothing about documentaries, but I saw you do that. And I want to do that. Like explain to me how the industry works. And he just loved talking about it. And it, I mean, it's the reason I ended up where I am. Um, so thanks, Chris. Speaking of Chris, Chris, if you'll be kind enough to give me some sort of signal when we're running out of time, I'm, I, if I get up and get my phone to get to look at the time, I'm pretty sure I'm going to spill the rest of the water on my keyboard and I really don't want that to happen. <laughs> Tempted fate once. Um, so here's, all right, Chris, there he is. There's, there's a rainmaker right there. Chris Hart is somebody who makes things happen around here. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to hear you giving that tribute, Rachel. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Um, glad that all worked out. UT is great for all these opportunities. Um, and, you know, Kevin, we can uh, go on. We kind of had the time generally blocked from five to six. So, you know, we're in technically bonus area, but, you know, we still got plenty of people. We do. You know, on the we, call. So we, we started with 31 and we're at 28, which is all credit to our panelists. And we actually have an outstanding question still left that, that hasn't been asked yet. But one thing I want to just note about your answers to this last question is they all involved not taking the easy way out. Like every one of you made the choice that was a little bit harder than the other option. And I think that's really important to emphasize that sometimes the, the best choice is gonna be the inconvenient one or the tougher one, the one where you have to cancel fun things to be a part of. Uh, and uh, I, I heard that and uh, I hope that everyone else did. Uh, so Christine, can you hear me okay? Cause this question's for you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, this is from Daniel, uh, she. Uh, Christine, how did your experience at TSTV, especially as a sports director and executive producer, help you in the professional world? Well, hi, Daniel. I know Daniel, too. Um, answer. I have used TSTV in every interview that I have had since graduating from UT. So I don't, I wouldn't say that anything in TSTV transferred directly because obviously this, the processes that we use in TSTV are very, very different. Um, we have a lot more problems and we have, uh, we cover very unconventional sports, but whenever I get asked a question of how did you handle a problem that came out out of nowhere and how did you go through that process I have referenced TSTV because I got to make so many mistakes as a producer at TSTV that you can't really make once you get a full-time job and as well as the fact that managing a team in college was an unbelievable privilege that I couldn't have imagined so I would just in terms of the question every single thing that you've ever done in TSTV will apply to your job because we produce shows and we did try to do it as professionally as possible and we dealt with a lot of things you wouldn't normally deal with but I I reference that all the time and it definitely made me be a much better PA because I when you're dealing with I've been working in breaking news for the past four months and it has been stressful every single second especially with the NFL draft coming up and TSTV is way more stressful than any of that. So it definitely prepared me well. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Well, there are, there are no questions left. Um, so uh, I'm going to draw out my farewell to see if any pop up. We're, I'm gonna try to keep this going for a minute. Um, uh, so I'll start with thanking you, Rachel and Shivam, Christine, Safe travels, Christine, uh, to Bristol. Andres, yep. Jeremy, who is about to be on TV <laughs> as he is every night at six o'clock. Um, on behalf of everybody who came, uh, thank you for your time, your expertise, your wisdom, your warmth, your spirit of sharing, and overall esprit de corps. We appreciate it. And I hope that I can say for all of the participants here, uh, thank you for growing everyone's network by six or five, six if you include me and I want you to, 
Um, we spoke at the top of this hour about the importance of networking and community building. And uh, look, we, just, we accomplished that today. So you five panelists have 28, 31 new friends out there and you 31 students who came tonight, your network has grown by five. And there are no more questions. So Chris, is, uh, is this a good time to say goodbye? Uh, thanks, Kevin. Thanks all the panelists. Thank you. Enjoyed it. I got a computer to dry. Take care, everybody. <laughs>